I know like millions of Americans know, when you get knocked down, you get back up. U.S. President Joe Biden gave no sign of dropping out of the presidential race during a rally in North Carolina on Friday, a day after a feeble debate performance against his Republican rival Donald Trump that dismayed his fellow Democrats. I don't walk as easy as I used to. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deb debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. Biden's verbal stumbles and occasionally meandering responses during the debate heightened voter concerns that he might not be fit to serve another four-year term, even prompting some of his fellow Democrats to wonder whether they could replace him as their candidate for the November 5th election. He studied very hard. He studied so hard that he didn't know what the hell he was doing. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trump, who put forward a series of falsehoods throughout the debate, appeared to take a victory lap Friday afternoon at a dueling rally in Virginia. He got the debate rules that he wanted. He got the date that he wanted. He got the network that he wanted. We need more substance. I, voters deserve more substance. Julia Azari is a political science professor at Marquette University. The proof there is, is going to be in, in kind of what the polls look like next week. Um, more than more than anything is sort of did this did this move the needle and it's very hard to take this out of the context of what's going on with Trump um you know I think no matter how badly Biden did the felony conviction is a much more significant story a much more substantive story um and that didn't change the polls very much the Biden campaign said it raised 14 million dollars on Thursday and Friday and posted its single best hour of fundraising immediately after the debate the Trump campaign said it raised $8 million on debate night. Biden, already the oldest American president in history, faced only token opposition during the party's months-long nominating contest. He has secured enough support to guarantee his spot as the Democratic nominee. Trump likewise overcame his intra-party challengers early in the year, setting the stage for a long and bitter general election fight. I think that uh, Trump won the uh, win the uh, the debate, and that uh, I think that uh, in this moment it's not uh, to see who gets stronger or not. But I think that uh, Trump is a good condition, and that uh, I think that uh, he know how to make deals with other countries. That's what we need. We don't need any more words because the American people live in struggle. You know what I mean? presidente Trump es una persona que respeto, ha, ha tenido toda clase de con, controversias y lo han estado como directamente persiguiéndolo para que no llegue, pero yo confío que él va a tener el triunfo. Y ya, no, no critico el actual presidente, pero lo único que sí puedo decir es que no lo está haciendo bien. Así que... The reaction of Democrats was at first shock, and that gave way to horror and then panic. And that's what we woke up with this morning, and the panic has continued. 
I don't know how long it will last, but I know that President Biden and his team have a lot of work to do. Uh, but uh, maybe he overprepared. It's easy to do that. And we've all done it in getting ready for a big presentation. Uh, but whatever it was, it was awful. And it produced the worst debate performance by any major party nominee in the entire history of television debates for president. He doesn't want to leave. He is fighting those who suggest that he needs to step down. He will continue to do so. From everything I've seen, he has the support of his family. I'm sure they do support him. Uh, but as far as the Democratic Party is concerned, the concerns they're expressing are behind the scenes. They're off the record. They're private. They're going to have to go very public, and they're going to have to get a delegation of impressive people together, including former presidents, for example, to go to the White House and convince Biden not to run. It's very clear what would have to happen. There is only one way for a nominee to be removed, and that is for the nominee to decide not to run before the convention, to open it up, to let the, in this case, Democratic National Committee set the rules for the convention, which would be an open convention with declared candidacies in advance, probably support from a certain number of state delegations. Uh, and then you let the convention work its will. It is the highest level of governance in either party. So the convention, in a sense, uh, will serve as a primary electorate that has already voted. There is no consensus. Uh, very few people have come out publicly and even suggested that Biden might want to move along. Uh, there are a lot of them behind the scenes. In order for Biden to step down, you would have to have a union of Barack Obama, uh, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, uh, quite a few senators, governors, others, uh, and they would have to all agree that that he has to go in the interest of the country and in the interest of defeating Donald Trump. They would have to go to the White House and try to convince him, and he will be tough to convince. And they'll also have to try to convince Joe Biden, and that may be even tougher. Uh, Kamala Harris has to be on the list because she's the incumbent vice president. I, I don't think she would be a particularly strong nominee. Governor Gavin Newsom, not just because he's governor of California, but because he has access to tons of money, which the new nominee would have to raise very, very quickly. There aren't many people who could do it. Uh, governor Gretchen Whitmer would absolutely be in this mix, Michigan being one of the key swing states. Uh, governor Pritzker of Illinois, who could self-fund. Uh, governor Shapiro of Pennsylvania, who's become very popular very quickly. Uh, an articulate guy who comes across well and fits Pennsylvania, a key swing state, probably better than Joe Biden does and certainly better than Donald Trump does. Uh, I could add other governors, including uh, retiring Governor Roy Cooper of North Carolina, uh, Governor Andy Beshear in Kentucky. Kentucky's deeply red, but Beshear's managed to be elected twice, which isn't easy for a Democrat in Kentucky. And there are plenty of senators. Uh, I think, for example, of Amy Klobuchar, senator from Minnesota, who did very respectably in 2020. It just wasn't her year. I could see her doing that. There, there are other members of the Senate, but let's not get into that. Members of the cabinet, the first person Democrats mention is Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. Uh, I think there are others who, who would qualify as well. Uh, the Secretary of Commerce, Gina Raimondo, uh, she would be one who would be in contention once people got to know her. She's very capable, very able. Uh, and there are plenty we're not talking about. But And Michelle Obama is not one of them. She's much too smart after eight years in the White House to want to go back, much less to be president. So, you know, we, we could speculate about names all night long. But what matters is who has the intense ambition, the ability to raise money, and the opportunity to put together the kind of coalition that could produce a majority in the convention, because that's what it's going to take in the end. Look, um, you know, it's, it's just impossible to say anymore what's going to happen or what's likely to happen, because there are all kinds of things that aren't on the calendar. 
what will go on in the Middle East? Will it get worse or will there be a ceasefire? What's going to happen in Ukraine? Uh, domestically, will we be surprised by a serious drop in inflation or will it go up? I don't know. Maybe other people do, but I don't think they know either. People guess about these things, but they really matter in the context of a presidential campaign. Uh, this is something that is going to take Biden a while to recover from if he can recover. And that's the question that people around him have to ask. Does he want to go through this crucible, knowing that the outcome may very well be a loss and the erasure of the victory in 2020? He may restore Donald Trump. And by the way, if this were anybody else but Donald Trump as the Republican nominee, this race would be over. It is only because Donald Trump is so controversial and so widely feared for what he may do that Biden is still in the race. He still could win. If Nikki Haley had been nominated, uh, I probably would uh, be organizing a long vacation. I, I think probably it would be a quiet period, but that isn't happening. And of course, you can also say that about Trump. If there were a new, a vigorous, younger Democratic nominee, I think people would take that opportunity in a minute to keep Trump out. 